There we go. Okay. Um, for the rest of the chapter, we're going to be concentrating on enthalpy. So we're going to be looking at heat, measurements of heat. Okay. Now today's discussion and Tuesdays, we're going to be looking at a concept called Hess's law. Now in Hess's law, if do you like puzzles, short puzzles, do you like short puzzles? You don't have to lie to me now. Okay. Well, that's kind of what Hess's law is when we have to, when we talk about manipulating Hess's law. Okay. I have added some slides and a little bit of information to your handout. So I recommend that you write them down or you can wait until later on. You can hop on this recording and write them down then. You don't have, okay. Up to you. If you decide to write them down in class, just let me know and I'll, Kind of take a few steps back and just let you get those jotted down. Anyway, today what you're going to need, calculator and your notes, okay? I'm going to get this going. Sorry, Bob, right? Do another packet. I'll my Oh! Oh! <laughs> I do. All right, so we're going to start off by examining something. Is the title of this slide grammatically correct? No. I'm asking. I didn't think so. I See, I thought that it would just be an apostrophe after the second S. I, I, I thought. That could be true, too. I honestly have no idea. Um, so I, I may have been writing it wrong in my little notes um, later on. I don't know. Anyway, that was just something to get us going. Anyway, so delta H, again, our change in enthalpy, is well known for many reactions, okay? Which is nice because... As, you'll, as we'll see here, and I'm going to get this out now, to give you your own copies, is in your textbooks, for those of you at home, and you will get a copy of this as well, you see all these substances that are listed here have an enthalpy value as well as some other values to go along with it. You see specific heats. Okay, you see Gibbs free energy, which we don't talk about. That's what that delta G is. Okay. But appendix C from your textbook is rather lengthy. It's multi-columned. Okay. The work has been done for you to help us work with Hess's law. So you don't have to sit there and do the work, meaning the actual experimentation and measuring. It's already been published. So it's, as they say, inconvenient to measure this change in enthalpy for every reaction which we are interested in. So we're going to be using Appendix C, um, not only for Section 6, but also Section 7. Okay, so this is going to become in handy. So those are your copies. So a little bit of light reading for this weekend. I don't know. Anyway, this slide. Muy importante. Okay. This is what defines Hess's law. Hess's law states that if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, the change in enthalpy for the overall reaction will be equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. So let's break that down. If we look at this diagram over here on the left, then we got two arrows here. One long blue one and two shorter green ones. If we just look at the blue one here, we've got methane and oxygen reacting together to form CO2 and H2O. This blue arrow indicates just start to end. Okay. 
And that overall change in enthalpy is negative 890 kilojoules, meaning it's exothermic. All right. Let's, let's imagine that this reaction actually occurs in some smaller steps. Instead of taking a, one single jump, we got little itty bitty steps in between. And each one of those itty bitty steps has its own enthalpy change. Okay. We see here, if we go from methane to oxygen to this kind of intermediate step here, where we have carbon dioxide and water and one half O2, which is just really one atom of oxygen. Don't let that fool you. Okay. <clears throat> you see that that change just to get to here is negative 607 kilojoules. And then the remaining transition, if you will, is going to go ahead and form CO2 and H2O and a total of negative 283. If we were to add those up, we would get negative 890. Okay. And so <clears throat> for Hess's law, we're going to a lot of times break down these reactions into smaller steps. They're already going to be done for us. So we don't have to do the breaking down. Okay. We do not have to do the breaking down. This calculation of Hess's law is also good if we ever wanted to um, experiment with something in the laboratory ourselves. We could actually make predictions based off of all this information as to how much energy would either be released or absorbed once this reaction is done. So it's got a multi-purpose here uh, for Hess's law. And before I continue on, um, along with this video, I am posting two other short videos. Um, one of them has a young lady talking about a couple of example problems. So that's good to watch. Um, another guy, Professor Dave, he's always fun to listen to. His video is actually going to be good for section six and seven. Yeah, his video is like four and a half minutes long. But the first half is for section six, second half is for section seven. So it's going to be kind of a multifaceted video. But that'll be all in, in today's posting. Anyway, um, because enthalpy, the change in enthalpy is a state function, the total enthalpy change depends only on what we start with and what we end with, okay? Anyway, here's this addition to the notes that I gave, okay? Again, if you don't want to write them down, that's fine. You can always come back and write these down. But I highly recommend you get these written down at some point, okay? So Hess's Law. What we're going to do, our goal with Hess's law is to, as I say, in quotes, mathematically and strategically arrange chemical equations to match what we call our target equation. And all this is going to be given to you. So you don't have to try and sweat it out by making this stuff up. You're going to be given the target equation. You're going to be given the kind of smaller step equations. It'll be up to you to manipulate them, okay? <clears throat> so there's really two small rules that need to go along with Hess's law. And then I also will have a slide of the steps. There's about four steps that you need to follow when you solve this, okay? First rule, there will be times that you will have to add, when I say add, that means put in, coefficients, not add them together, but place coefficients into an equation, okay? When you do so, you have to multiply the entire equation by that number that you're multiplying by, okay? So all the coefficients in the equation have to be multiplied by whatever number you're going to multiply to get your uh, correct coefficients. In doing so, when you are increasing the coefficients in a reaction, what you're actually doing is also increasing the um, molar amount present of substances. So that will impact the delta H value that you're going to be given. Because, as we saw a few sections ago, enthalpy change is an extensive property, meaning it depends on how much is present. So let's say if you multiply a chemical reaction by two, okay? So all the coefficients in the chemical reaction get multiplied by two. You must also multiply the enthalpy value by 
two. And before your test, as you're writing this down, before your test next week, towards the end of next week, we're going to be doing um, a mixture of Hess's Law problems and Section 7 problems. So you're going to be seeing quite a bit of um, additional work with these, kind of make sure that um, you're headed on the right track. Yeah. Okay. Second law, last law, or, um, rule, sorry, not law. If you reverse the reaction, which we're going to do, because we want to match up substances and place them in the right um, spot in accordance with our target equation. If you reverse the reaction, you must also change the sign of your delta H value. We saw that rule or that, that statement a few sections ago as well. For instance, if your forward direction or your forward reaction is going to be a negative delta H value, if you flip it, you now have a positive delta H value. And those are the only two rules that we have to follow. Now here um, is going to be a list that I'm going to show you uh, kind of like how to solve. Okay, it's four steps. Um, today, our focus is going to be on manipulating two lines of equation, okay? On Tuesday, we're going to step up a little bit and we're going to do three, okay? So um, just know we're going to be increasing as we go. So here are the steps. You, okay. <laughs> so there again, there are four steps to solving Hess's law problems. First one is you need to manipulate the reaction equations when it's necessary. Sometimes you won't have to touch them. Sometimes they're already good to go. And you do you manipulate them to line up necessary reactants and or products on the correct sides of the arrow in accordance with our target equation. So when I say manipulate, you can flip the equation. You can multiply the equation. You can even divide the equation. Okay, that's why I said that quote unquote mathematically arrange in the goal of Hess's law. Really flip, multiply, and divide are really some of the only things you're gonna have to do, but you never know. You gotta keep an open mind when you're solving these, okay? So once you've manipulated everything as you see fit, your second step is you're going to add them together. Much like you saw or did with ionic equations, where you added all the reactant ions together, you added all of the product ions together. So it's a good chance you're gonna have some lengthy um, Reactions once you add everything together. All products go on the left, all reactants, sorry, all reactants go on the left, all products go on the right. And so you're going to add the reactants, you're going to add the products, and then you're also going to add all the delta H values together. Because your manipulations, if you had any, would alter the delta H value, which would then impact your overall calculation of your delta H, which would be reflective of the target equation. And then step three, much like we did with the um, ionic and net ionic equations, we cross out substances that appear on both sides of the arrow. And when I say we cross out, we cross them out mathematically. Meaning if we treat the arrow, the yield sign kind of as a subtraction sign, you know, we we start to uh, remove these substances mathematically. If they all have the same amount of, of substance on each side, you can remove them completely. Sometimes, like we're going to see in our first example, you might have to subtract half of a molecule.
And then lastly, in step four, you can rewrite the remaining substances to ensure that it matches with our target equation. And again, it's a good thing you're writing these down because you can use these on your test. Wait, you need to just take our notes too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. You all caught up? Are you caught up? Cool. Let's look at an example. Okay. As you see here, we have, and I'm going to sit down for this just so I can point stuff out on the computer screen. Okay. <clears throat> so let's read the question here. The enthalpy of reaction for the combustion of carbon to carbon dioxide is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole carbon. And the enthalpy... Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the enthalpy for the combustion of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide is um, negative 283.0 kilojoules per, sorry, that's not supposed to be carbon, that's degrees Celsius, der. Um, and so we have a two-step little situation here. One step, two step. This right here is our target equation, okay? You'll often know which one our target equation is because the delta H value is the one with the question mark. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to manipulate these two equations and, and then cancel out what we can and what we have remaining needs to match this. So, <clears throat> One of the best ways to do this is start locating substances. So go to your target equation. We see that our target equation on the product side, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, one carbon atom, okay? And what side is it on? It's on the reactant side. It's on the left side, right? So... In any of these equations, do you see anything that matches similar or anything that maybe could be manipulated or not manipulated at all? If we look at equation one, you notice that we have one carbon atom. And what side is it on? It's on the left, right? No, left, correct? <laughs> so this is our target equation has it on the left. This equation has it on the left, and it's got the same, the correct amount in the coefficient. Do you think I need to do anything with this one? Do I need to flip it? Do I need to multiply by anything? No, I'm going to leave it just as it is because it matches. Okay. The next thing I'm going to look at is <clears throat> I am going to start looking at my products. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Okay. Let's look at carbon monoxide, CO. Again, there's no coefficient in front of it, just CO gas. Where else do you see that in our two, re in our two equations? In the second one on the left. But wait, it's on the left here. It's on the right here. That's not right. It's not matching up. How can I manipulate this? Flip it! And when I flip it, what happens to that negative sign? Becomes a positive. Very good. And so I'm going to go to the next slide, but you're going to see that we decide, hey, we're going to keep number one as it is. We're going to flip the second one so that carbon monoxide is on the right-hand side. And so that's going to change the sign here. And you see, as you see here, this is what that second one's going to look like after we flipped it, right? Okay, so we flipped it. We manipulated both of them. Now we need to um, kind of write this out. And I'm going to write this out just so you can see how it all came down, okay? Because they kind of skipped on everything here. Sorry, just give me one second.
Mm, yeah, okay. C O plus one half O two. Okay. So you can't see that just yet. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. I, I could turn the light off if you need to. Anyway, so what I did was I just added them all together. Okay. I put all the products together. And I'll show you. I put all the products together. Those are on the left-hand side of the arrow. I just put them all together on the left-hand side of the arrow as well. Same thing with my products on the right-hand side of the arrow. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start eliminating anything we can. I, um, I'm, I, mm, wait. <laughs> In my rush, did I? No. I did it right. I just dumbly put parentheses around the O2. I don't know why I did that. So one half O2. Okay. So let's mathematically cross out and change what we need to. Okay. Do you see carbon by itself on on both sides or just one side? Just one. So I can't I can't eliminate that. So that gets carried back down. Okay. Okay, so I've got one molecule of O2 here, and I've got one half a molecule of O2 over here. I know it's awkward. You're going to see some awkward coefficients. Don't let that fool you, okay? Well, we've got one and one half. One minus one half you get, and that goes bye-bye. That gives us one half O2. Okay, next, CO2. Is it on both sides? Yeah. Is it the same amount on both sides? Yeah. Well, there's CO and CO2 here. So we got one CO2 and one CO2. So we don't, re that doesn't make it to the final cut. So that takes care of everything there. And all we're left with on the right is CO gas. Does that match our target equation? Let's check. Uh -huh. <clears throat> that is given right here. Okay, and, it, and if you if you're still trying to figure out where it needs to be, it's usually the one with the delta H and the question mark. Yeah, like right here. Yeah. So, does our does our formula or the reaction equation that we just did after we crossed our thing doesn't match our target equation. All right. Once we've confirmed that it matches our target equation, that's when you, I, I recommend you go ahead and add up the um, enthalpy values. So we have negative 393.5, which is what we were given. And then we have a positive 283.0 kilojoules. Don't worry about that negative sign there. It's just showing that it didn't get rid of it. You know, because mathematically, you don't like to get rid of stuff. So <clears throat> really, all, what's important is on this side of the delta H. So negative 393.5 plus, again, we're summing them, 283.0. We have an overall change in enthalpy of negative 110.5 kilojoules. So can anybody tell me? What type of process is this? Exothermic, very good, because I got that negative sign there. Very good. We ready to try one together? Yes, we are, because we're going to anyway. Oh, no. oh, this screen, yes. I was like, I already started racing. I guess those at home can't see where we're at here. You ready? Okay. So carbon occurs in two forms, graphite and diamond. The enthalpy of the combustion of graphite is negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And that of diamond is negative 395.4 kilojoules per mole. And we are shown these two reactions. We need to figure out the um, 
change in enthalpy for when we go from graphite to diamond. So what I recommend you is write the first two equations. Okay, so C, I'm gonna write them on the board so you can see them. And you can use shorthand if you want to, like I'm not gonna write graphite and diamond, okay? So C is graph, okay? C is graphite. I'm just rewriting what was on the slide here. Plus O2 gas yields CO2 gas and an enthalpy change of negative 393.5 kilojoules. Second equation, again, I'm, I'm just writing this down, so if you're a little behind, that's fine. Second equation was carbon as diamond, I'm just gonna put diam, plus O2 gas yields <clears throat> CO2 gas and an enthalpy change of negative 395.4 kilojoules. Now our target equation, okay, I'm gonna put a star here, is gonna be, um, what was it? Um, C as graphite is equal to C as diamond, okay? So this is our target equation right here. Let's look at the first one. Are, are you, you got it all written down over to you? Awesome. Okay. I didn't want to go without you knowing. Let's look at the first one. Okay. Compare it to the target equation. Target equation just has carbon as graphite on the left-hand side. In the first equation, that's where we can find it. Then we ask ourselves, is it on the right, the correct side? See graphs on the left here. Oop, this is not supposed to be an equal sign. It's supposed to be an arrow sign. Durr. Okay. Um, would you do anything to this first one? I hear a no. No, I agree. I wouldn't do anything. I'd keep it. Okay. What about the second one now? So our product on, on the target equation is diamond. We see that carbon is diamond is in the second equation. You want to flip it? Okay. So why do you want to flip it? Exactly. It's on the, you flip it so it's back on the right side, which is going to match this. Okay. So now I'm going to have CO2 as a gas <clears throat> yields carbon as diamond plus O2 as gas. But what does that do to my delta H sign now? Makes it positive. So now it's 395, positive 395.4 kilojoules. Okay. And I'm just going to cross this out so we don't get confused with which is what we're using. Okay. So <clears throat> I just, I flipped it. And so I wrote it in the flipped form. So now we want to put them together. Okay. So. This is, again, this is the part where you're going to need a little room, and I'm going to try to do my best here. So we have C as graphite. Again, I'm just going row by row here, plus O2 gas. That's all for the first one on the left-hand side. Plus CO2 gas. That's all for the second one. Yields. Now I go back up to my first equation. Write down my products, CO2 as a gas plus, that's the only one there, carbon as diamond. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. And O2 gas. So I've got everything added up in terms of reactants and products. Now I start seeing what can I eliminate mathematically. Can I eliminate? Carbon is graphite mathematically. Is it on both sides? 
No, it's not. So it gets carried down. Carbon as graphite. Okay. What about O2? I can eliminate. Very good. It's on both sides in the same quantity. Next one, about CO2? Eliminate. Again, both sides, same quantity. So that's all for my reactants. So I draw an arrow. And all I have remaining now is carbon is diamond. What I have remaining, does that match my target equation? It absolutely does. So that confirms I've done everything, all the manipulations that I need to. So now I can go up here and solve my delta H value. Okay. So you take negative 393.5 kilojoules, add 395.4 kilojoules, and you should get a change in enthalpy of positive 1.9 kilojoules. And that's how you do Hess's law. So as I said, on Tuesday, we're going to come back and we're going to do three lines. Same process, just a little longer. Okay. Um, but, and as I said, next week, we're going to be doing more problems with this. So we're going to hopefully be in a good position before we get to the test the following week. Okay. Questions? Well, good job today. Um, those of you who are on the meet, thank you for stopping by. I will be posting this video um, a little bit later, hopefully next hour. But you are free to log off. Have a good weekend. I'm sorry. Uh, the last two sections are going to be the due on the day of your test, like after next week. So you got a wise, a wise, you got a wise to go.